Insect species number in the hundreds of thousands. But for centuries, one insect in particular has been consistently more useful to humanity than any other. That insect is the honeybee. Perhaps because it benefits us so greatly, we have studied the honeybee more than any other insect. Though many mysteries remain, we know much about its life cycle and activities. The honeybee is among the most socially organized insects. It lives in colonies of up to 80,000 bees. Three castes make up a colony. The heart of the colony is the queen. There is only one queen in a hive. Her function is to lay eggs, and she lays hundreds of them every day. Some of her eggs hatch into male drone bees whose sole function is to mate with the queen. The drones are stingless and incapable of feeding themselves. Other eggs hatch into female worker bees. Workers greatly outnumber drones. They are smaller, they can sting, and as their name implies, they do all the work to maintain the hive. The three castes queen, drones, and workers, combine to form a society so complex and exactly organized that it defies our imaginations to realize that the bees act only by instinct. In the wild, honeybees usually make their home in a sheltered location, such as a hollow tree. But people provide many colonies with homes these days, though the bees themselves are not domesticated. They are still wild creatures. Wherever they make their home, honeybees build a city of wax. The workers pass through a succession of duties as they grow older. Young ones perform certain tasks. Older ones perform others. An important duty of young worker bees is to construct the cells that make up the city of wax. These cells are cradles for the young and storage vaults for food. The bees build three sizes of cell. By far, the highest percentage are small cells in which the worker bees are reared and in which food is stored. They build a small number of larger cells for the drones and on certain occasions, a few special queen cells. Young worker bees produce wax in glands of the abdomen. They extrude the wax in thin flakes, plucking it from their bodies with special claws on their legs. Using parts of their mouths, called mandibles, Comb builders work the wax and apply it to the developing comb. To span distances too great for a single bee, some workers form living bridges so that others may cross. The young workers hang quietly in curtains as the wax forms in their bodies. Here is one of nature's great mysteries. We still do not understand how the bees create these perfect hexagonal cells. Many bees work on each cell and they work in total darkness. Yet the result is a miracle of precision that rivals the most carefully engineered work of humans. The hive offers the bees protection from the elements and carries them through the seasons. Each season brings new activities to the colony. The bees emerge from winter with their food supplies much depleted. As soon as spring permits, the older bees begin the search for food and water. Flowers give bees their food. From the blossoms, the bees take pollen and nectar, a sweet liquid that is the raw material for honey. The bees also forage for water. With it, they dilute the honey they use in brood raising. Most of the activities of these social insects are directed toward raising the young. 
pollen is a vital requirement in the diets of the developing bees. In early spring, pollen is scarce because there are so few flowers. But as the season progresses, pollen becomes abundant. The workers collect it on their hairy bodies and comb it to receptacles on their hind legs called pollen baskets. The pollen pellets can be seen on some of the returning bees. Inside the hive, the foraging worker searches for a cell for her burden of pollen. Bees may collect pollen and nectar on the same trip. Here she deposits the nectar in a honey cell. She finds a pollen cell and kicks off her load. Another worker packs the pollen and adds honey, making bee bread, a food for the young. An examination of the pollen pellets shows that they are rarely mixed, evidence that the bees visit the same type of blossom on each trip. This is most important to our welfare because it means that as they travel from flower to flower, the bees cross-pollinate many of the crops that we depend on for food. Apples, oranges, plums, alfalfa, clover, and dozens of other crops depend on the bee for pollination. Bees assume many duties in the hive. Some of the youngest workers are housekeepers. This one removes a dead pupa. While this one prepares a cell to receive one of the queen's eggs. As the queen lays eggs, a court of workers attends her constantly. Just what is the secret of her attraction? It has been learned that the queen bee emits a complex chemical substance called a pheromone that attracts the workers. Pheromones are something like hormones, except that hormones work internally, while pheromones are emitted externally and affect other individuals. Here is an experiment that shows the influence of the queen pheromone. The workers ignore this male drone bee. But when the drone is daubed with a drop of queen pheromone, the worker bees react immediately and pay to the drone the same attention that they would to the queen. A healthy queen may lay 1,500 eggs or more a day. She can lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs. In the smaller cells of the hive, she lays fertilized eggs, which will develop into the female worker bees. In these larger cells, she lays unfertilized eggs, which will develop into the male drone bees. The developing brood must be well tended. Young worker bees act as nurses. This one takes honey, dilutes it, and feeds it to a developing larva. This nurse takes the pollen-rich bee bread, mixes it with honey, and feeds it to the young. The brood temperature is critical, and if it becomes too high, the bees fan their wings to cool it. Foragers bring water into the hive, which, as it evaporates, further lowers the temperature. When the larvae are fully grown, worker bees cap the cells with wax. This is a comb of capped worker brood. Inside the capped cell, this larva spins a delicate cocoon in which the marvelous process of metamorphosis will take place. The pupa develops until the metamorphosis is complete. 
drones take 24 days to mature. Queens take 16 days, and workers, like the one we're watching, take 21 days. The worker cuts the wax and emerges from its cell. She will feed and rest for a few hours, and then take up a succession of duties, first within the hive, and then outside it. The mellow days of autumn spur the workers to new efforts as they prepare for winter by adding to their store of honey. And we reap a harvest made richer by the work of the bees. Soon, frost touches the blossoms and the colony must practice new economies. The idle drones are no longer needed and they are driven from the hive to die. Winter reveals another amazing adaptation of the bees. While all other insects migrate, hibernate, or are killed by the frost, the honeybees actually control their environment. They form a close cluster in the hive with the queen at the middle. The bees' movements release metabolic heat that the cluster retains. As the bees at the edge of the cluster become chilled, the bees inside change places with them and the colony survives the cold winter. On warm days of early spring, the bees leave the hive to rid themselves of waste. Some never return. Another spring, an awakening world, and the wonderful life cycle begins anew. <laughs>